Hi everyone, it's Marie with Tati Soap and today we're going to make a soap from start to finish. So I've got my oils here and I'm going to add my lye water to it. Add slowly while stirring. And you may actually notice that I sound different and you don't hear any of the background noise and that's because I'm doing a recording after the fact which is kind of interesting because you get to see a lot of things that you don't actually pick up when you're actually making the soap like how my blue gloves really don't match my pink frilly apron anyway back to the soap so now we're gonna stick blend it so you notice I tapped my blender a little bit just to get the air bubbles out and I'm gonna be making a soap it's going to be I called it um, a gold streak in a world of green. So it's going to be green in color and I'm going to try to put some gold veins in it using some gold mica. So we'll see how that turned out, turns out. And For that I want it to a fairly thick trace because I want to be able to uh, layer it and to texture it at the same time. So I need it fairly thick. Isn't it nice not to hear the the buzzing of the stick blender? It's nice and quiet. So now I'm going to add my color. I'm using green uh, chrome oxide. And I should really take my blender out and put it aside because I nearly tipped it over. See there? Woo! Tipper, tipper, tipper. I usually mix my pigments with a bit of glycerin and sometimes with a bit of oil as well. And I find that it really gets it mixed in quite well. So we mix the color in very well. And actually it's I'm gonna have to add some more color to it because I don't um I don't find it green enough. Even though I'm gonna be uh gelling the soap and when you gel the soap it, the color actually darkens a bit I'm going to add the rest of the green oxide to it there you go and I actually put in a little bit of the soap mixture back into my little Dixie cup just to get every bit of the green out so we get that in come on in 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 Give it a bit more of a mix. So it's starting to thicken up a little bit here, and um, which is good. I still have to add my fragrance so that's gonna come, in, come up in a little bit and for the fragrance I'm using uh, some essential oils of one is of Petit Grain essential oil and um, Litsia and it gives it a really nice green lemony scent it's a very rich scent um, but it has that light note of lemon from the Litsia, so it's it's quite nice, and it's even nice for men. It's it's a uh, it's not a flowery scent. It's uh, nice and clean and earthy almost. There we go, and I mix my essential oils with uh, some castor oil, and it seems to anchor them a little bit so that they don't uh, evaporate as much. I always seem to do that. I, I don't know that I've ever really noticed if it actually does work, but just a habit I got into. And I usually try to use essential oils, but sometimes I will use fragrance oils because some essential oils can be very, very expensive, especially when you get into rose scents and whatnot. So we'll get that mixed in quite well 
And as you can see, it's getting nice and thick, but that's good because I really want it quite thick. This is actually looking like paint. The my kitchen is that color, and it looks like the uh, the, the consistency of the paint that I use to paint my kitchen. All right, we'll stick blend it a little bit because we'll get it a little bit thicker. All right. So for the gold veins, I'm going to be using some gold mica. It's actually called flash gold mica. And I've never used micas before. So it'll be quite interesting. All right, let's get our mold. My mold is nicely lined. Some people I talk to, they just hate lining the molds with the freezer paper, but I kind of like it. I like doing origami, and I look at it as a form of origami when you fold all the paper and get it all it's nice and straight into the corners. So here we go into the mold, and it's still not quite, quite thick enough. It's still a bit um, liquidy. I'll clean up my mess there. And there we go. So as you can see, it's still it's not thick enough to really texture. So I'm going to have to leave it for a bit and uh, come back. And there I am. And now we can work on it with it a little bit better. Although I've never done this before, so I'm kind of just, just playing around. And I want to make some little peaks and valleys kind of to make it uneven so that to give it a or try to give it a kind of a natural uh, look like a mineral like you would have a a vein of gold uh, metal running through uh, you know like malachite or, or quartz now in hindsight um, after I cut the soap, which you'll see after this at the end of the video, I should have probably used quite a bit more of the gold mica. I kind of sprinkled it on there, and of course I didn't have all that much to start with, so I didn't want to use it all out in, on the one soap. But um, my gold veins came out a little bit thin uh, and not very... Uh, prominent so I, I should have probably put it a, a little bit more than I did so anyways for next time I'll know so here I'm using a sieve and I should use also a sieve with smaller holes because this is a little bit big you can't you put the powder in and it, a lot of it goes through right at the beginning and you get little clumps of of uh, gold mica here and there so it's on my list of things to buy and I've seen actually some people use a um, a little tea ball or a tea diffuser. So I might actually just try that next time. So we get the gold mica on there. Now we're going to put some more soap batter on top. So if I get my act together, there we go. I'll spoon it on there. Actually, I should be using a spoon too rather than the spatula, but now sometimes you just grab the first thing that is at hand. I'm sort of trying to do the same sort of thing I did with my um, Day at the Beach soap where I used a uh, cocoa powder lime to do kind of like sand dunes. So there's more gold mica. Isn't that nice and shiny? Very pretty.
Again, I should have used more. Okay, so now it's time for another layer of soap on top. And then more gold mica. Glop, glop, glop. See what I mean by the, the sieve being too big? <laughs> Okay, and there's the last of the soap. That'll be for the top. So now it's nice and quite thick. What you didn't see me do, because I cut out some parts of the video, is that, of course, I, I tapped it down every once in a while just to try to get rid of some of the air bubbles. Although I still ended up getting a few in the end, but... That's an important thing to do is to, uh, especially when your soap is thick like that, you, you do want to, you know, tamp it down and make sure that you get the uh, as much of the air bubbles out as you can. So now I'm going to smooth out the top, get every bit of soap out of the container there, mixing cup, and then and get every last drop. There we go. So other than small, I usually get about uh, 15 bars, sometimes 14, 15 bars, depending on how how well I cut them. And it's a 50 ounce of um, oil recipe. And I usually like, that's a nice size of soap to make. Okay, so now I'm just playing with the top. I'm not exactly looking for a very highly textured, but I just want to get a little bit of waves, I guess, or peaks and valleys. I could sometimes use um, a chopstick to do that. And uh, I've seen other people use a whisk, actually, that you can, it's like a small whisk, and you just kind of dip it in and lift it up and you get peaks. We'll clean it up and then I'm going to put some a little bit more gold on top that's if it wants to come out of the spoon that is Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. There we go. And we are done with the soap. Just about. Oh. Nope, a little bit more. Just a few little bit spaces, places there just to get. There we go. All right. So yes, make sure. Look at it. All done. Okay, and here's the finished product. As you can see, my gold veins aren't all that um, 
pronounced, but not bad. And then, of course, when I cut it, it kind of smeared a little bit. But there's my Gold Rush soap.